Hey guys, it's Darren back again with another quick repair video. Well, hopefully a quick one, let's have a look. Uh, so this is the Neo Geo AES, uh, which I picked up off eBay uh, as a broken, you know, not working unit. So um, I have turned it on and it doesn't work. Um, I'll show you that in a second, but let's go through it, see if we can repair it. Okay, so I'm just going to plug a game in, uh, just the usual cables and power, fire it up, and yeah. So we've got graphical issues, and that doesn't look very good at all. So I'm just going to put you back down there. Um, right, so we need to power this guy off and have a look what's going on. So I'll quickly pull the screws out, just one, two, three, four, and five on this revision. Um, something to note is the feet are already gone. So when you pick up one of these consoles with the feet gone, uh, you know, it's pretty much 100% that someone's already been inside the console and tried to fix it. So keep that in mind. Um, it's a good and bad scenario. Generally, when someone's gone inside, it's... Uh, They've attempted to do a BIOS upgrade, potentially the Uni BIOS, um, which can go wrong, and that's usually an easy fix for us. Or, or they've gone in for other reasons, like the graphical issues, and they've just given up. So, yeah, sometimes it's hard to know what you're getting yourself into. Um, I, I'd never pay too much for these things. I always keep it really low, and um, you know, like a hundred US dollars. That's about my limit on this. Um, they're worth a lot more, so if it doesn't meet that criteria, I usually don't buy it. So let me get on with it, and I'll show you the inside. Okay, so the lid's off, and we're we're inside. So let's take a look. Um, I'll see if I can uh, pan you down. So just sorry about that noise. Uh, just bear with me while. I I try and zoom you in and we'll go over the board. First thing we should do is look at the BIOS chip. So this is already socketed. So SP1 is your BIOS in case you were wondering. Uh, this is a factory Japanese BIOS by the looks of it, but it's on a socket. So has it been changed? Potentially. Well, it's on a big angle, so that's no good. So we might have a BIOS one in this case, like a BIOS repair. So the guy that's done this might have damaged a trace or a pin or something. So that's not a bad place to start. Um, but let's just quickly go over the board. Um, it's a dash five. So it's a later revision. Um, we're just looking for obvious damage, especially around um, you know the chips in this region because they generally uh, produce the graphical sort of um, issues you know the, the VRAM and work RAM and stuff um, so everything looks okay yeah I just like to eyeball everything before I really get started and then, then I'll look at caps and things but caps don't really generate that sort of graphical issue. Uh, it can also be cart slot. So we look at the actual cart slot itself, make sure the pins are nice and straight, which they appear to be. They actually look like they're in pretty good condition. So this BIOS chip's definitely suspicious. Uh, the angle's terrible. So I'm gonna pull that out. Uh, we'll have a look and see if we can see any damage. Okay, so let's pull this out. Uh, most use a plastic tool. You just want to get between the socket and the chip, obviously. Don't go under the socket. Uh, yeah, you'd be a bit silly to do that, and you'd cause all sorts of damage to the traces. So you just gently wedge it up, a little bit on each side, and then the chip will come out. So looking at our chip, uh, yeah, look, it's it's been desoldered. I can see the marks on the on the legs. Um, the socket actually looks like 
it's in reasonable condition. So I can't imagine it was just an installation error. That would be just too easy. Um, but we need to really be sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the diagnostic BIOS uh, in this socket. Uh, sorry, you just drifted there. I'll put the diagnostic BIOS in and we'll turn it back on and we'll see what that tells us. Uh, it might identify um, a faulty chip or something, um, but it gives us something else to go by. I'll also pull the board out. We'll have a look at on the underneath of this socket because that could be a, a soldering error or a bridged pin or something. Or, you know, I'm always suspicious of these sockets that are done. So uh, they're quite fiddly. So it could be a, the area that's at fault. Uh, so let me just grab the BIOS and we'll come back in a sec. Okay, so here's the BIOS. Um, you know, by the way, guys, I'm on a new microphone today. So if this sounds good, let me know. If it doesn't sound good, also let me know. Uh, it's just the Blue Yeti. Uh, it's on a stand down here just off camera. Um, I was using the Rode Lavalier um, collar sort of microphone that you kind of clip on to your, your clothing or onto the stand where the camera sits. And that was working pretty well. But I noticed, um, yeah, I just couldn't get a very clear recording. So hopefully this sounds much better for you. And uh, it's easier to understand my Aussie accent for the American viewers. All right, so let's uh, let's put this dive BIOS in place. Um, just gently push it down. Let's try it again. Let's find out. Okay, so that's come up with uh, yeah, complete graphical glitches. So I think we're looking at a, a bit of a serious problem here. So let me uh, power that off. Pull the game out. So I, I'm. I think we've got a fundamental problem going on. Um, I need to look for a, probably a broken trace or something. Um, but I'm still suspicious of this socket. So uh, let's just power it back on. And I'm looking at the screen. I won't necessarily show you at this time. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push around, try and find any physical damage or any changes, basically. Um, the game in actually that was a bit silly I need the game in to yeah there we go to really see the output um, I like to do this physical test because it can help highlight oh, there we go it can help highlight some uh, broken traces or you know traces that are just making contact but sometimes not kind of intermittent so I just go around the board and I physically press and you know, I am getting some variations on the screen but even try the cart slot itself just very gently um, so nothing really stands out at the moment no okay so let's power this guy back off and we need to go to the next stage which is uh, to pull the board right out and have a look at all the solder work so let me just get on with that um, it's just a couple of screws around the outside, so all these little uh, goldy coloured ones. Just back them out, back off the uh, four in the card slot, and we'll lift the board. Okay, so I'll just come out of time lapse there and I'll come back to video. Um, and we'll lift this board out together so you can see what's happening as I do. Uh, We'll pull the, put the bottom case away. Uh, now that's interesting. So there's a big trace being repaired there. So that's off the multi out. So what has he done? Someone's run a trace up to the controller port. That's odd. I'll have to look at the pinouts of these and see what's going on, but that is quite weird. Not sure why you join the multi out to the controller. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'll look up these pinouts and see what's going on. If it's just a voltage feed or something, well, that's stupid. There's better places to do it, but I'll check it out. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, but what we're interested in is the underside of this socket, really. So let's have a good look at that. So. Mm, 
Yeah, there, there very well may be some issues on this, on this solder work. It's hard to tell. Um, I can I can do a few uh, continuity checks and just see if they actually run down, uh, and you know if they're actually joined together. So especially through this region here, it doesn't look very good. Uh, it could be flux, but I'm seeing a bit of sort of um, contaminant on the surface there. If it's just flux or if it's solder, I'm not sure at this stage, but we'll have a good look at that. And I'll check out those pinouts and I'll see what that actual jumper wire is doing. So let me just do a bit of research and uh, I'll come back in a sec. Okay, so not much luck at this stage. I've tried a few things. Um, I've cleaned the cart slot with, um, with a cloth and isopropyl alcohol. So basically, you get a piece of white cloth, um, spray it with isoprop, uh, put a card in and wedge it down and really clean out the slots. And you'll see that what comes off is that sort of black stuff. So that can generally help a lot. Uh, it hasn't fixed it this time, but it's good to give it a clean. Um, I've also gone around the board with a multimeter. I've just checked that all the chips have five volts on the right pins. Um, generally, it's the top pin up here, like the very last pin in the in the stack. So um, five volts was present on, on all the chips. Um, you know, you, you definitely want to check the, the the big processor, the 68000 and the Z80. You want to check the BIOS um, and and the RAM and so forth up here. You want to check all that. Uh, it all seemed pretty good. I, I couldn't check the big SNK chips. It's, uh, I didn't bother looking, at them up, looking them up at this stage. Um, so I don't really know what's going on or what to do next. I can't see any broken traces or anything. So this is a classic Neo Geo AES problem. You've got garbled graphics and nothing's out of place. So I'm going back to the original BIOS here and the guys clearly um, desoldered this out of the board but what's concerning, if, if you look at the pins here, especially that pin right up there, you can see that it's taken the pad with it. So that one there has a, a solder pad attached to the leg. Now that is interesting. So potentially under this socket um, is, sorry, under the socket there is a damaged pin or trace up in this corner. So I have no choice now but to remove the socket uh, desolder it and uh, just have a good look and see what's going on. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to fire up the desoldering station. You hear that whirring in the background there. Um, that's coming up to about 300 degrees Celsius. So I'll let that heat up um, and I'll get on with desoldering all this work here. Just these two rows and we'll take the socket off and we'll have another look. turn that desoldering gun off. So that's all desoldered. Um, now if we turn it over, the socket should just come out, which it does. Uh, so first things first, let's examine the socket. That all looks fine. So now let's take a look at the board. Um, let's see what's going on. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So that pin there, where I suspected that it ripped a trace, it actually has. And we can see how it's, it's disconnected. So that is good news. I'm, I'm very hopeful now we can get some progress out of this. So put my little glass under the camera and you might be able to see. So see that very end pin there? It has no yellow or no gold colored trace running to it, either on the, the bottom side's broken off and the top side should be joined to that pad there. So you can see the whole the whole trace and pad is ripped off. So, you know, without calling this guy a fucking idiot, that's probably the problem. And we can see it, that it's still sitting on the original Japanese BIOS. You can see that it's, there you go. You can actually see that it's attached to the um, pin still. So the guy's ripped the whole pad off. So without getting too excited and thinking we've solved it, Let's just wire in some uh, jumpers, a, bit of, a small bit of wire, or two bits of wire maybe, and we'll, we'll get that all working. And um, hopefully that fixes our problem. Okay, so before I actually 
get onto the soldering of this. Um, I thought I'd give you another close up. Uh, I think you can see that quite well. Um, sorry, I'm just holding the camera so it's going to be a bit shaky. Um, I'll get a better poking stick. So you can see this trace here. The trace is actually loose. See that whole trace is ripped off the board. The pad's gone, it should look like that, like a ring of copper. And that's the, the return trace to that pin there. So all we really need to do, do is um, run a piece of wire from that via there, um, connect it to the pin of the socket, and then run it up here and join it to you know, the other end of that via there. So I'll just trace that carefully um, and we'll join that together. So probably do it with two pieces of wire, one to run from this to that via. Um, even on the underside of the board, we could run a wire between that via and the underside of the board. That's probably tidier, isn't it? So I'll do that. Yep, so two wires, one under and one over. So trying to trace these small traces with your eye is, is actually quite tricky because, um, I'm, I'm gonna show you a tip in a minute, is because I'm tracing this one here, so I know it's uh, you know the third one. It's on the bottom of that triple line there, and it goes over that via. Uh, but then that via itself introduces a new trace, so I know it's one inside. Then that one introdu introduces a new trace, so it's two inside, and and so forth. You've got to work it all the way down. It's it's going to end up to here somewhere, or you know one of these. But what I find easier is you get your camera set up, and I'm just going to use a an iPhone 7 for this. Um, is take a nice photo in um, you know full resolution, um, then put it on your computer and zoom it in, and you can easily trace it and even run a nice coloured uh, scribe across it with just the mouse pointer, and you can really find the, the pin you're looking for with ease. So that's how I do it. Um, if I can't eyeball it and identify it easily, I just do that. And you know what? For reference, I like to always take a nice photo. Um, of underneath the chip. So whenever I remove a chip that gets replaced, um, I take a high resolution photo of the area. So I know how the traces run underneath the chip when you can't see it. Um, and you can potentially troubleshoot and join wires um, from underneath, uh, you know, if you've got a fair idea. So if I had looked really closely at the very start of this video, I would have seen that trace there was broken. And then I could have referred to a previous high res photo I had of this area and I could have worked out how to repair this without desoldering all that. So that's kind of the point of the exercise. Okay, so I just put up the graphic so you can see what I was talking about. And now on the board, all I've done is I've just scratched up the surface of these vias uh, just with a small tool, like not this one, an actual um, an exacto knife, just to very gently expose the copper. So we have to prepare that to solder. So it's important to cut the, the solder mask off the top of that. Uh, and it, ran, it just ran over to here. So I scratched up that one as well. So we're gonna run a, a jumper wire between that point um, and that point, just around the back of the chip here. And then underneath the board, we're gonna run another wire on the bottom of that uh, socket pin, which is gonna be freshly soldered and back to that, on, to that point on the underside. So that's the plan. Um, to make this easier, I'm gonna poke uh, very small resistor legs or something down through the holes, just so we've got some more purchase to solder to, and that should make our life a lot easier. Okay, so that's all soldered into place. I've even put the socket back in. So let me just give you a shot of what I've done. Uh, where's my pointing stick? Um, so I've, yeah, I ran um, some little resistor legs out of each via. Uh, soldered them into place, ran a little jump wire across between the two. Um, the, the tape there, that's Kapton tape. So there's a layer on the board itself, then the wire sits on top. Then there's a second layer of tape to sandwich it all together and you press it down and it just keeps the wire in place and uh, it's nice and heat resistant and it's really good electrical tape that. So I use Kapton tape to hold it in place. Um, try and resist using things like hot glue because um, the hot glue can actually damage the solder joints um, and it's a pain to get it off if you need to go back in there and repair it. So I don't use uh, hot glue. Um, and then the other link I put underneath um, after I put the socket in place. So that looks like that. 
the same setup, just uh, the bottom of the via, um, capped on tape, and the link across. So, with that all done, let's give it a test and see if we've made a difference. I think we will. I'm pretty confident that was our problem. Uh, so, let's get on with it. Um, we could put the original BIOS in, but let's go with the, um, the Neo Geo Diagnostic BIOS. Um, the label got a bit messed up. I was spraying isopropyl alcohol and cleaning things, but that's okay. All right, so the socket's okay. The chip's back in. Um, we're going to need a game. And cross your fingers. Hey, there we go. All right. So the Diag BIOS has passed. So I've got graphics and uh, it's even run all its tests. So we're pretty good. So let's now uh, pull this one back out. I've just popped that out. And let's put the, um, the Japanese BIOS back in. Uh, it is gonna be in Japanese, um, but it's what we need to test with right now. Um, ultimately, I'll fit the Uni BIOS to that and um, you know, get some English out of these games. All right. Well, it sounds good. Turn that sound up for you. Okay, so it is Japanese, that's fine. Japanese board, Japanese game. Uh, I don't have a controller in right now. But yeah, look, that looks pretty good. So yeah, with the Uni BIOS, all this text here becomes English, which is really nice. So we'll just wait for the game to start. It's good to check things like that uh, flashing um, sprite there, make sure all that's rendering nicely, make sure we can read all the text, which we can. Um, now I like to make sure the game actually starts and yeah, just observe it all, make sure the explosions look good, make sure the sprites themselves render, make sure all this uh, animates and flashes properly. Um, yeah, it all looks really good. So, I'll just turn that sound down. Uh, in fact, I'll turn it off. So, that's it guys. Like, um, I, I probably got lucky, I guess, with this one. I don't know. Um, but it's a good, it's always good to see um, the feet off a board, which kind of suggests someone's gone in there and played with the BIOS. And in this case, someone had ruined the BIOS uh, pads. Um, so, you know, if I had taken my time, like I said earlier, and really inspected uh, the socket area, I would have noticed that broken trace down there. Um, but you know what? Desoldering the socket with a desoldering gun, it's not even that big a deal. Um, it only takes five minutes. So that, that was out. I could see what was going on, and that's it. That was a repair done. So um, I hope you have good luck with your boards. Um, if you do that and it, it hasn't fixed the problem, um, typically I see issues um, with this sort of area up here. So, you know, these two Sony chips, um, this bank of four chips across here, um, and a few others, maybe some down here. But, you know, that starts to really open up a can of worms and you're chasing problems. And you don't really know what, you, you know, you're just kind of guessing. Um, Neo Geo boards are notorious for having uh, burnt and broken traces, so always have a good look. But, you know, nine times out of ten, if someone has touched the BIOS area, they've damaged it, and you just need to repair it and just take your time and just repair it as I did. So I hope you've, uh, you know, I hope that helps you troubleshoot. Um, I'm going to keep making videos on Neo Geo because I've got another one on its way from Japan. I picked up yet another one for... Uh, 110 US, that one. This was 100, so it's a pretty good deal. This is now a working board, so this is now worth, you know, 350 to 400 dollars. Um, probably 350, so that's pretty good. I'll put a joystick with it. I'll bundle it up with a cable and a power supply um, in Australia, so it all operates and good to go. I'll sell it on to someone else, and they can enjoy the game. All right, guys, I'll stop talking. I've got a bad habit of rambling, don't I? So. Um, I hope this video has sounded better on my new microphone. I hope uh, the Americans out there can understand my Australian accent. If you can't, well, I'm sorry. Uh, go and watch Luke Morse or someone. Um, but that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.